so the idea behind the gene therapy is that we, we know what causes the disease. So we know that there's this polyglutamine expansion in the Huntington gene. And so what we'd like to do is eliminate the production of the toxic protein. And so one way of doing this is to take advantage of the fact that you can generate a virus and that virus will go into cells and then you can use one of a number of strategies to reduce the production of the mRNA from that mutant gene. So we have used something called a microRNA. So a microRNA is a uh, piece of a short 21 or 22 base pair RNA that recruits the machinery called the risk machinery that can then lead to the degradation of a full length RNA that is derived from a gene and therefore prevent the production of the protein. So we use a specific kind of virus called an adeno-associated virus. And we specifically use adeno-associated virus five, which is a subtype of adeno-associated virus. And the reason we use that is that adeno-associated viruses are normally occurring in people. They're really safe. And as far as we can tell, they, have, they don't produce any symptoms. And AAV5 is, is really safe. We have dosed you know, more than 100 patients with AAV5 over many years. Uh, more than five, actually more than 10 in some cases. And uh, it's really well tolerated. And as far as we can tell, really quite safe uh, and safer than some other things that people use. Uh, and so uh, so in, in this AAV5, inside it, we have uh, put in a normal promoter that encodes a gene that then leads to the production of this microRNA. The microRNA then gets recruited by the RNAi machinery, and it downregulates the expression of the Huntington gene. And that in turn should lead to less of the toxic RNA, less of the toxic protein, and should therefore prevent the neurodegeneration. Uh, and, um, and so the first question is, does it actually reduce the production of the bad protein? And so of course we've done this, I mean, we've been working on this for 10 years. And so it definitely does that in preclinical species. So you can rescue a mouse, but of course that's a niche market, uh, rescuing mice. Uh, so we, we made some Huntington pigs a long time ago when we keep, kept them in this castle in the Czech Republic and we've dosed them about five years ago. And so we can rescue some pigs, but that's not the same thing as rescuing people. So now for the first time, we've now dosed around 30, we've dosed, now dosed, uh, well, we've, we have 34 patients in our study so far. And, uh, you know, and these, uh, and so we've taken, so the first question is, you know, is it safe? And, and one of the things we made a kind of a, a decision in, in, in our study, which is that we, instead of to actually get this virus into the brain, we're going to do it surgically. And, and the reason is that we really wanted to make sure that we infected as many neurons as possible in the part of the brain that was degenerating. And we were just not convinced that you could get the right kind of exposure in the brain without putting it there directly. And lots of people said, well, you know, it's crazy. Who's going to want surgery? And as a, um, as somebody who's worked in neuro for a long, long time, I would, I can tell you that I would trade one day of surgery any day for death. So, um, so we started recruiting people and we deposit our AV5 into the striatum. But of course, people wanted to know us that we, uh, are we actually reducing the production of the mutant Huntington? And so we weren't sure that we'd be able to see anything because we're only putting it, we're putting it into the striatum, but we're measuring the mutant Huntington in the cerebrospinal fluid around the spinal cord. So, um, so we then proceeded to, uh, so, so what we reported today is that we can actually uh, put it into the striatum that those patients, at least the first 10 patients seem to be doing really well. They, they didn't have any adverse events associated with what are really very high levels of a virus in your brain. And that we seem to be able to reduce the mutant protein. So this now sets the stage for us to be able to do the experiment we want to do. And the experiment we want to do is if you prevent the production of the toxic protein in somebody who has very early stage disease, can you prevent the clinical progression? And so that's what we're gonna figure out next year. That's basically where we are.